Hi everybody, it's Nikki and I'm here to do a video that is personal experience, personal opinion, um, and not to be used as medical advice. Uh, I am doing a video today on the Guardian Connect, um, and this is a newer Guardian CGM um, sensor. It's a standalone sensor. It does not connect to the 670G or to any pump. Um, it's Bluetooth capable, Bluetooth ready. It's Bluetooth something or another, and it communicates with your phone. Um, and I think it's only an Apple phone. I don't think it can be used with um, Android. So um, the reason I'm doing the video is because I've done almost nothing but bash Medtronic sensors for a couple of years and kind of justifiably so, definitely in my case, but I think, you know, in a lot of people's case, um, cases, but, um, but I came across this transmitter, the, the Guardian Connect transmitter by accident, but actually by accident after I had called Medtronic and tried to get one for myself um, because I was curious. I mean, I was curious what it was. Actually, I was curious about it for the calibration factor um, and whether or not it had the iSIG. And so I was trying to get one for myself so I could try it out. And then I was told I couldn't. So I had long since let the whole thing go. Um, and then I stumbled upon one when I thought I was receiving a Guardian 3 transmitter and it turned out it was a Connect. Um, so that's how I came to be on it. Um, but once I got on it, I was actually really pleasantly surprised by what a good sensor it is. Um, so I decided I would go on and say something about it. Um, I have done a lot of testing on my sensors. I've, you know, I've been, I'm on the Dexcom G6 now. Um, I've worn the 10 and 14 day Libres. I've worn the Guardian 3. Um, I'm getting ready to get an Eversense uh, Sensionix. Um, and I really enjoy looking at sensors, so that's why this was kind of fun to me. Um, and when I did get it, I'm not going to lie, um, I assumed it was going to be pure entertainment and it was going to be like the Guardian 3, um, which in my case was terribly laggy and not very accurate. It's a really needy sensor. Um, and I will say up front that the Guardian 3 got needier the more demands that were put on it. So in auto mode on the 670G, the Guardian 3 was really a wreck. Um, in manual mode, it was much better. You know, it lasted longer, it was more accurate, and there's a good reason for this, um, which I won't do in this video, but it made sense that the more demands you were putting on the sensor, the kind of the crazier it got as far as not being able to do anything at all. Um, but when you scaled it back a little bit, you went into manual mode, it was even better. Um, so the Guardian Connect might be this great of a sensor because there are no demands on it. It's not being used, there's no rules. Um, it's not being used to suspend your pump. Um, it's not being used to come up with its um, you know, predictive algorithm or whatever. Um, so there are no, there are very few demands, no rules. Um, so it just gets to be a sensor. And I think that that might be why, as far as when I get to the error section, there's you know few errors or not a lot of errors and alarms and everything else. And again, it's not automotive, it doesn't need to um, you know, fulfill all these requirements. So, um, so I have to say that, because it's kind of a caveat. Um, yeah, I think that's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, so um, I'm putting all this information into two documents. I'm putting stuff into a um, Google document where I'm comparing um, all the sensors I'm wearing. Um, and I'm also gonna put up a Google doc about the Mini Med Guardian Connect that's all by itself with lots of words, <laughs> which shouldn't surprise you four months into the video. Um, but there are a few things I would just like to say about the, the uh, sensor. And these were the things that were the most kind of mind blowing to me. Um, so the first one, I did do categories. And these are, this will be in both of these documents. Um, but the first one that I wanted to, to talk about was the lag. And that was, this one I really do think has nothing to do with that auto mode, manual mode stuff I was talking about. I really do think that this is an improved transmitter um, and an improved sensor. Um, and what I saw here, and this was the part that really made me almost, almost um, be excited about what the 780G might be able to do. Because if they're using a sensor like this, this would automatically put them at uh, an advantage over what the 670G had. Um, the lag with the with the Guardian 3 and the 670G for some people could be terrible. I mean, it could take an hour to reflect, if it ever really reflected, a rising blood sugar or high blood sugar. 
um, with the Guardian Connect, it's it's really good in the lag department. And in fact, I would I'd liken it to what the Dexcom is able to do, um, or even the Libre. I mean, it's right up there with the with the best. Um, now, I will say I've only I only wore the sensor for three weeks, but I did log the way I log, and that means I was testing sometimes twenty times a day or forty times a day, and watching it through rises and falls and everything else, um, and comparing it to the Dexcom. And it looked really strong in the lag department. Its average lag, like the Dexcom, um, was anywhere between 5 and 15 minutes, depending on how fast the rise was or how fast the fall was, really the rise, um, and you know how high exactly I was going. If I was on a fast rise to 380, um, it could take 15 minutes before it really reflected it. If I was on a slow rise to a 220, it maybe took five minutes to reflect it. Um, but whatever it was doing was definitely in line with what the Dexcom was able to do. Um, the accuracy, again, this might be that, you know, um, fewer burdens, better sensor area. Um, but I did do a scatter of readings over the course of a few days where I did 50 readings. Um, and I will say that my sensor values fell within 20% of the meter BG readings 72% of the time. Um, I did something, I have to go back and look, but the Guardian 3 in a similar type test did it maybe 54% of the time or something. So it was a marked improvement over what the Guardian 3 was doing. Again, though, that would be possibly an issue with that it's just a standalone. Like if we took this sensor and put it into auto mode, um, maybe it goes backwards in this, in this department. Um, but as a standalone, it, was, it, was, it had really good accuracy um, and the times that it was outside of that range were usually during times of a rapidly changing blood sugar. Um, charging transmitter, you know, it's Guardian. I mean, it's, uh, it's Medtronic, so there's about a full charge necessary after every change. The lifespan is seven days, um, and I was able to go all the, you know, four or five sensors, whatever I wore, uh, three or four sensors, I was able to go the full seven days without needing to charge it. Um, the thing I did notice is I did need to charge it a full two hours where I was able to get away with about 30 minutes on my Guardian 3. So I don't really know what that was, but, um, but that was different. And signal. Um, the signal is it's an interesting category, but I, I don't know enough about it to say anything for sure. Um, because it connected to my phone and not my pump, I think the signal works a little bit differently because I don't have my phone on me all the time and I don't remember losing the signal. So if I left my pump, um, if I took my pump off for some reason and went out for a run or, you know, whatever, and I came back, when I'd come back, I would definitely, I would have definitely lost the signal. Um, if I took my pump off and went to the other house to do some laundry or, you know, to do something a few floors away or a couple of rooms away, I would lose my signal. Um, I don't remember ever coming back to a lost signal, so I think that it must be a stronger signal on that, and they must, so it must not be the same range that you have to stay within. But that's all I can say on that. Um, uh, extending. This was interesting because, yes, these sensors can be extended, as can the um, sensors with the Guardian 3. Um, but I didn't use enough of them to be able to see if it went anything further than a day or two. Um, so I could definitely restart the sensors, which was nice, because I did lose one sensor because of two bad calibrations that were just, you know, it was just a crappy thing. I shouldn't have lost the sensor, but I did. Um, but because I lost it to bad calibrations and not really truly a bad sensor, I was able to restart it and then continue to get my seven days worth. So that was nice. So you can restart it. Um, you don't have to change sensor if you see the change sensor and you can extend it. Um, but I was not able to extend for more than like a day and a half. And there was a lot of my trying to get it to work for a day and a half. Um, but that was, you know, a couple of sensors worth of trying. It's possible you could maybe get three or four days. I, I don't know. Um, calibrating. This was another really big deal. And again, this is a difference between manual mode and auto mode. Um, so it might be that it's easier because it's standalone mode. Um, an auto mode calibrating at times has been really difficult. Um, and manual mode has been much much easier but at times could be difficult with this one I think that I dang it, I didn't put it in here um, but it was something like 
I think 4% of my calibrations were not accepted. Um, and I, you know, I logged everything. And out of that 4%, oh no, sorry, 11% weren't accepted. Um, but out of that 11%, only 4% were during times that it should have been accepted. It was just, it was just wouldn't accept my calibration. Um, the rest of the time I was messing around trying to extend or doing something that was kind of out of bounds. Um, so it's a really, again, it's just a better sensor. Um, errors, type and frequency, I'll just kind of go through there and I'll say they do have something called sensor glucose not available, um, which I believe is like the, the um, you know, loss of signal on Dexcom G6 or the G3's sensor updating, which is a lot of people's favorite. Um, and you can be told to change your, to change your sensor, again, depending on why you're being told. If it's just you got a couple of bad calibrations, then you can restart it. Um, if your sensor is dead, you know, it really is just not working anymore, then it doesn't matter if you restart, it'll just tell you to change it again. Um, and there can be, as I said, calibration not accepted. Um, they don't happen nearly as often. Um, and I think that's another reason why I was just more fond of the sensor is because um, I don't mind, I don't mind calibrating um, twice a day if that calibration gets me something. And I don't mind clearing a couple of alerts or checking a few things as long as it in general is not disturbing the sensor's ability to perform and to give me reliable numbers. And in general, the sensor was giving me reliable numbers. So I wasn't mad about the fact that it was, you know, alerting me to things throughout the day. Um, again, if this is what they're hooking up to the 780G and all of a sudden it's hooked up to auto mode again, maybe it's screaming all day long. Um, I don't know, but like this, it showed a lot of potential. Um, following capability, still none. I'm trying to decide if I rush through this. I'm not gonna rush through it. This is part one. <laughs> this is part one of this video um, because it's worth a part two. Um, all of a sudden I feel like a Medtronic, <laughs> you know. But it's worth a part two. It's an interesting discussion. So I will be back. Thanks for watching. Bye.